I'm glad you're here to join us upon this first day of the week. This morning, as we approach this new year, I would want each of us to consider ourselves as treasure hunters. I want us to think about this idea of being treasure hunters. Because in this physical realm, we all will fall into that category in my mind. See, in the last several years, I've noticed that the media has portrayed the excitement of treasure hunting, every kind of treasure, every kind of uh, precious stone, every kind of metal, uh, even to the point of, of spending great amounts of money, tremendous amounts of money, in large machinery for that one who desires to make his living in that manner to even small detectors that will help one find treasures within the within the ground. It could be said we are all treasure hunters. We're looking, we're looking for those treasures. And yet what is it that man is really looking for? And so often he's looking for simply riches, wealth, comfort, a, a life of hope. And yet he's looking for it in a very physical manner. He spends multitudes of money. But even that one who is not going about seeking treasure as we see treasure, it is so often that one is looking for that one big deal that will set him up good. Or he's looking for that one big crop that will give him that which he needs. Whatever it is, we all seem to seek treasure. There's one thing I want us to keep in mind is, is this, that one who is a real treasure hunter sets his mind on the treasure. He sets his mind knowing what it is that he is seeking, he knowing where it is, knowing how to get to it, and dwelling upon that one thing. All that he does is aimed at having that treasure. There are several different kinds of people that seek those treasures. There are those who simply give up. I want us to think about that point. There are those that simply give up. There are those who are in it simply for the greed, or the, the want to have more money. There are those that are in it that may use that money to help society in some manner. And then there are those who are more or less the historical treasure hunters who seek to share all they have, all that they find with everyone. They seek for everyone to have a small portion of that treasure or to have some of that treasure to look upon it to realize it is of historical value, even though it may be worth millions of dollars. But the one thing all of them do, they are focused on obtaining the treasure. This last group I really want us to focus upon. As a child of God, I want us to think about what they're saying and I want us to realize that, that there are many times that that one who is a child of God has given up. He's quit. Matthew, the sixth chapter. In verse 19, he says, Do not lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus says a mouthful what he's when in this little passage. And he said, As I walk on this earth as a child of God, the, the thing I might be asking myself is, am I laying up treasures in heaven? Am I seeking to, to do the things that God desires of me? But we go back and we look at this little passage here and, and a realization that all that I have, all that I've acquired physically will be destroyed. That, that's not something I like to reflect on, but as I look at, at life and we find these things, we save, we, we build up, we put it in a closet somewhere, or we put it in a, a, a 401k or an annuity or uh, in bonds or in trust or in all kinds of things. 
It reminds me of the rich or of the of the rich man. He says, this day I'll lay it up. I'll build bigger barns. I'll lay it up in these barns. And then the Lord said, this night your soul will be required of you. And then who will have possession? Who will squander what you have spent all this time on? And for nothing. And so often I look and I see these these ways we seek to have retirement, we put our monies in it, but somebody's doing a lot more making money than we are. And so often it becomes money that is squandered and we're left without anything. And so where are we? It's something we need to realize is that which we try to save back and we try to keep it, it, it will eventually all be destroyed. Then he says something else. He leaves us with this thought, whatever, whatever one's treasure is, that will control his life, his whole life. He says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Whatever my treasure is, that will control my life. I must ask myself the question, what? Is my treasure as a child of God? How am I to lay these treasures up? In Colossians, the third chapter, verses two through four, he says, set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ who is your life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. We can come up with a lot of thoughts and a lot of ideas. What he's simply saying, he says, look to Christ. Look to those things above. How can I know what those things above are? That's difficult. He, he gives us a great deal of, of uh, thought here. As soon as we read this, he gives us a passage that tells us. But what he's saying is, look to Christ. What did, what did Christ do? What did Jesus do as he walked this earth? That's who my life is patterned after. That's who my life as a child of God should be like. Seeking to do the will of God. Seeking to follow those things that God desires of me. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on those things of Christ. How he lived his life, how he treated people, how he served people. You see, we must realize that that this one, this Jesus, the Christ, came, and his service that he was giving was to bring salvation to men. His whole life was based on that one thing. Bringing salvation to man, teaching him, showing him that there was a salvation, that there was a God who loved him, that there was forgiveness of sin, and it came through his blood as he died on that cross. We're to be bringing salvation to men, the salvation of Christ. We're to be teaching them, we're to be showing them these things. He said, you've died. You've died and your life is hidden in Christ. I have died to self. It is hidden in Christ. Christ living in me. <laughs> and changed who I am. But in doing these things, there is one thing that he has assured me of. It. I live my life as it should. He says, and when Christ appears, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Why? Because I've set my mind on the things that are above, not on things of earth. I've given myself over. I've let Christ live in my life. And I've strived to live my life as Christ did, showing others the way to salvation. The way to salvation. See, Jesus tells us why we need to seek these things. He says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be. 
also. That your heart will be also. Seeking the treasure. One of those treasures that God has set in front of me. He's given me the word that I might spread it through this world. But Paul tells us also why. It's when Christ appears. In serving him. In serving God. In serving man. Showing them the gospel. Showing them salvation. When Christ appears. You will appear with him. In glory. I will appear with him when my treasures are laid up. In Luke, the second chapter, sometimes we want these things to happen. We sit back and we're waiting for Christ to come. We want that immediate return. Somebody as the Thessalonians. We want that done. We want to, we sit back and we just wait. They want us to understand there is a difference in that waiting that he set forth. If we go to Luke, the second chapter, verse 25 through 20 uh, through 32, it says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. I want us to see some things about this one, this man named Simeon. He said he was righteous. He belonged to God. He was right with God. But the other thing says he was devout. He served God. He was willing to give himself over. But whatever it was that God desired of him, this was what he was doing. He was seeking to do the will of God. But he was waiting, waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. I would have supposed that he comes to the temple each day, but at this very moment, he came into the temple under the Spirit. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to him, or to do for him, according to the custom of the law, he took him in his arms and he blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, or to die in peace, according to your word, as God had promised him. He said, for my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. He said, you have let me see the Savior, the Christ. But there's a word in here that he's used. He says, waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Waiting. Waiting. This word is not simply to wait, to sit back and, and let someone come get you or, or let something happen. That waiting, he says, pro decomia, mea, to forward wait. To forward wait. Looking toward. Simeon was not demanding, not hurrying. He was waiting. He was patiently vigilant. Remember, he says he was devout. He was doing what God sought him to do, what he desired for him to do. Seeking Christ. He was seeking to see the Christ, not knowing who he was or what he would look like, but seeing, but seeking. He knew he would know him when he saw him. I want us to think about that a minute. I, I, all of a sudden, something hit me. My wife makes peanut brittle. You spend a lot of time waiting on peanut brittle. You pour the stuff in the pot, you mix it, you get it ready, you bring it to a boil. And you wait for it to get to a hard crack. But you don't wait for it sitting back. You must stir continually, keeping it moving, keeping it turning. If you let it set too long in one place, it begins to burn and destroy. It's just stir it, stir it. You can't just wait. You have to be vigilant in caring for it until it gets to that point. You're waiting for something that's going to be in front of you in just a moment. 
but it takes time. And it takes your time of doing what is there. This is sort of what he's saying. It, it, he's waiting, but he's waiting and working while he's waiting. He's, he's looking forward. He's waiting toward that point, seeking toward that point. In Second Peter, we have that word used once again. But it's in store for us as we're waiting for the return of Christ. As we're waiting for him to come back to, to take his own with him. In 2 Peter 3, verse 8 through 13, I want us to listen to what he says. He said, but do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but all, but that all should reach repentance. This idea that that we don't see time as Christ sees time or as God sees time. He said that time is, is just there, it's just time, or it's just a void. It's there for us to be serving him. He says the one thing that he seeks more than anything else. Or the one thing that he wants. He said not wishing that any should perish but that all should reach repentance. He's offering that time, that patience for man to come to him. And yet how can man come to him when man may not know anything about him? You see it's up to that one who is a child of God. To be willing to teach those who are about us. It's up to us to use that time as he waits patiently. Not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. And yet he says something else. He said, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. It will come upon us. And then the heavens will pass away with a roar and, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed he said but this will be destroyed and those works those works that you have done as a child of God those things that have happened in this world they will be exposed and then he asked a question he said since all these things are thus to be dissolved what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and goodness. What sort of people should we be? What sort of people should we strive to be as children of God with these things happening or going to happen? Waiting for the hastening, the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved and heavenly bodies will melt as they are burnt. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. This word waiting, this word wait that we see here, what is it, two, three times? It's the same word. Waiting. Seeking diligently to do the Lord's work. Seeking diligently to teach others that are there. He says your work will be shown. We get this idea of laying up, laying up treasures in heaven. Knowing that he is coming to take his children to be with him, to be with the Father. All we do, we do looking toward that home in heaven. If I am a child of God, if I am striving to, to, to fulfill the desires of God, I am looking for that treasure. I am seeking that treasure that those who are needing to hear the word of God. Seeking to show them the way to salvation. It's not about them coming to salvation, although that's what God wants. It's about me taking the word to them. That they might see it, that they might hear it, that they might be dwell, that they might dwell upon it, because a man cannot come to Christ unless he knows about Christ. 
Are we laying up treasures in heaven? Are we laying up treasures in heaven? What, how are we living? What are we doing? What is my work going to look like when Christ comes? In Romans the 8th chapter, we come once again to the same idea, the same thought. In verse 23, he said, And not only the creation, but we ourselves, we as children of God, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, who have found this salvation grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoptions of sons. As we await eagerly. If we're waiting eagerly, we will be found doing the work of God. We will be found living as Christ. waiting eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, in this hope of eternal salvation, in this hope of a home in heaven with God. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Just as Simeon awaited to see the Christ. We wait. We wait in righteousness. We wait being devout. We wait striving to fulfill the desire that God has for us to teach the gospel to all men. He said he seeks for all men to come to him. But they cannot know the words of God without us bringing them to them. Maybe you're a child of God and you give up. Maybe you're a child of God and you sit back and you take these treasures and you store them back in your own closet. Maybe you realize that God wants you to search these treasures out. And lay them up in heaven. Maybe you're one who doesn't know that there is a Christ. That he seeks you. He seeks. He seeks to give you forgiveness if you're willing to follow him. Maybe you're one who simply needs the prayers to say, give me the strength. To follow those things that are above. Seeking to do God's will. Sometimes we just need to be reminded. We need to bring forth this thought. Seek to do for God those things he desires of us. Whatever, you're, whatever it is you're seeking this morning. I ask that if you have needs that you would send me a message on Facebook. A private message. We can talk about those things. We can seek those things. But we need to be looking. We need to be looking towards serving our Lord and our Savior, doing His will. That we might lay treasures up in heaven, that we might have an eternity with God. I hope there is something here that is encouraging to you. I want to thank you for being here, and may God bless.